If you're a former U.S. Armed Forces service member, then you likely have access to GI Bill dollars. And this is basically a government program that allows you to get money to pay for education, training, etc., to kind of get you into the workforce, right? Well, in today's episode, we are talking with Logan Fluke in an interview, and he is going to tell us exactly how you can navigate the kind of the VA waters and get the GI Bill to pay for, are you ready? Four SAN certifications, an undergraduate degree, and a master's degree. It's an unbelievable, um, I don't want to call it a hack, but the way he figured out and navigated is absolutely brilliant. He's going to tell us exactly how you can do it too, and it's going to be awesome. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Before we get into the episode, I want to give a shout out to the Simply Cyber Discord server. It's got a thousand people strong right now, a lot of sharing of knowledge, education, resources, curriculum, and it's a good inclusive community. So if you're interested, hop on there. The link is in the description below. It's absolutely free and it can only benefit you. Also, I want to give a shout out really quick to the Cybersecurity 101 uh, playlist. It's an entire semester long course that I published last week. If you have no background in IT or you're thinking of making a mid-career pivot into information security, I strongly encourage you to check this out. This course is designed to not have any prerequisite or any assumptions about your background or uh, knowledge level when it comes to IT. Okay. Now, if you're new here, my name is Jerry Ozier. This is Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. And on this channel, we do labs, we talk to experts, we're doing everything cybersecurity to make you uh, a better practitioner and just share with the knowledge with the community, okay? So that's interesting. Hit the bell for notifications and the subscribe button because we're doing live streams almost every Thursday now and you wanna get notified when we go live. We got some awesome ones coming up in September. Um, it, I can't wait. I'll, I'll be announcing it on my social media, so check it out, okay? Now, let's get into the discussion for today's talk, right? So this is Logan Fluke. This is his blog, insert ID here. It'll be linked in the description below. Check it out. He basically writes a review of every program he goes Goes for and he's in like total um, consumption education growth mode right now so he's doing a lot of work well he reached out to me and said hey Jerry I found a way to have the GI GI bill pay for basically an entire SANS education package uh, and it's quite brilliant I want to share it with you I said yes let, like let's get on now I want to point out that the knock on SANS and you know the double-edged sword of SANS has always been that SANS education is awesome, right? SANS is kind of the leader in the cybersecurity space with education and it's really, really rooted in their instructors, right? So their instructors are like these, you know, really senior level kind of cyber Beyonce type people, John Strand, Eric Capuano, Mick Douglas, Dave Kennedy, um, the, the, just so many experts in our field and that's the people who are instructing you. That's the people developing the curriculum, which is fantastic, but the knock has always been that SANS is incredibly expensive, right? Like you almost never fund it yourself. You get your employer to pay for it. Seven, eight thousand dollars per five day class with the cert. Um, yes, you get an amazing education. However, it's just really, really cost prohibitive, especially um, if you're trying to self fund and with all the other resources out there, uh, it becomes very difficult to justify spending that kind of investment. So. Let's jump in. If you are a service member, if you have access to GI Bill, this is gonna be perfect for you. Even if you've already spent some of your GI Bill on other education or boot camps or whatever, and you, if you have four months and four days left of GI Bill, you're at least gonna be able to take advantage of the first part of getting four certs um, uh, from SANS and four education packages from SANS. But if you are have access to your whole package and you know you wanna go all in on cybersecurity, Logan's plan is going to be unbelievable. All right, let's hop in to the interview. Thanks so much. Explain to me and explain to all of us exactly how you were able to leverage your GI Bill to basically get all of the SANS education certification and get paid all at the same time. Yeah, so it's, it's relatively new. So the SANS Institute, which is the one to put on the training and everything like that, um, they have created their own, basically college, the SANS uh, Technology Institute. It's, it's regionally accredited. Um, it's in the, like the Southeast of, uh, the regionally accredited, uh, like organizations. So it's, it's degrees stand, you know, just like any other like organization, any other college. And when I came across that, 
Um, yeah, it's I right thought, there, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, when I came across it, I was like, well, if it's regionally accredited, if it's accepted, then I bet you the GI Bill will provide fund, funding for it. And so I reached out to them and I'm like, hey, I have my GI Bill. Um, can I use that with this program? And that was little little over a year, um, almost a year and a half ago when I reached out to them. They did not have a bachelor's. They only had master's degrees and graduate level uh, certificates. And they had just like months before, maybe a month before I reached out, just came out with their undergrad certificate, which is four courses. Um, and they were just gonna leave it as the undergraduate certificate, the graduate level certificates and the master's degree. That changed about last year when they came out with their bachelor, their actual bachelor's degree. And when I spoke with them the first time and I was asking, are you gonna do a bachelor's degree? Their initial plan was no, because obviously with full blown bachelor's degrees, you need general electives. And SANS is not in the business of teaching general electives. Um, but now if you have an associate's degree, you can transfer that associate's degree into their bachelor's and, and that takes care of all the general elective requirements. And then you just take SANS classes for like your major. Um, and so when I signed up for the undergrad certificate, it was four, four classes. First one is now the GFACT certification, the GFACT. Um, when I took it, there wasn't an actual certification that came along with that. It was just a foundational cybersecurity course. Um, that one is pretty easy. It's like not even CompTIA Security Plus level. Um, mm. it's, a, it's actually kind of interesting. They first started this program starting with GSEC, um, their SEC 401 class. And when I spoke to them, they explained that a lot of people who had never done cybersecurity would be thrown into GSEC and would fail just because it is so much information. And so they came out with the, the, the first class of the foundational. So it's not really, it's meant to be super difficult. It's meant to just be basic. And then you move from that into GSEC, move from GSEC into GCIH, which is the, the incident handling course. And then your fourth course is a uh, elective. And there's different ones like GCIA, which is the intrusion analysis one, GPIN, GWAP, so network pen testing, web app pen testing, uh, forensics class, a ICS class. It was, it was kind of cool. You can kind of pick what niche you, you want to do. Um, and then if you pass that, then you get a little undergrad certificate. And so I came into it with a full 36 months of a GI Bill. And, you know, I, I took pretty in-depth notes to figure out exactly how much GI Bill I could use with SANS. And so each of those four classes, when I took them, I doubt it's changed, but it might have, but I doubt it. It took one month and one day out of my GI Bill. So when I finished the four courses, I had like, I don't know what those numbers are. I think I wrote it down. I had like 31 months and 26 days or 32 months or something like that. So I had only used just over four months of my 36 month GI Bill because the way that the GI Bill looks at undergrad certificates, it's like, oh, this isn't a full, you know, program level credit. So we're not going to take out a huge chunk of your GI Bill. So for a student, it's awesome because you get the full class, but it costs the less of your GI Bill. Um, so I basically spent one month of GI Bill per SAN certification. And then with GI Bill, they give you a monthly stipend for like housing. And so I think it was a total of like a thousand or eight hundred dollars worth of, of uh, housing allowance per class. So at the end of it, it was a little over three thousand of, of housing allowance that came in. Yeah. So so you did you did four <laughs> four SANS courses. You got four only four months and four days taken off your GI Bill, and mm -hmm. you got three thousand dollars over the course of this uh, program, basically. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, so that's, that's a win uh, in many capacities. So let me ask you a couple questions here. One, it sounds like you said um, you, you do have to have an associate's degree in order to kind of pull this off or maneuver in, in such a way. And I, it makes sense that SANS wouldn't do general electives, but is that kind of a prerequisite that people would need? So, so that's if you want to do the bachelor's course. 
Mm -hmm. um, you don't need a full associates to do the undergrad certificate. I think that they're like, uh, I just had it before I came in. So I had already like cleared what it was, but I think they l literally just need to see that you're either enrolled in college or have done college in the past. So I'm pretty sure if you just had college credits, you can do it because it's not a full program. It's just an undergrad certificate. Um, so you don't have to, do, you don't have to have an associate to do the undergrad certificate. You have to have an associate to do the bachelor's program, which is what I'm in now. Okay. Okay. So then just so I understand too. So you've got, you know, um, you, like you said, the, the entry level one, then the GSAC and the incident handler, and then your elective, those four classes, they, they all come with certifications as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's the, the G facts, G sec, G C H, and then for me, I did never pen testing as my elective, so G pen. Those are my okay. Things. And do you do you have to take like a separate? I don't have sans certs. Do you have to take a separate exam or certification, or is that like your final for the class? So that's the final. So the way that they they do the grading is it's all on demand. So you know they they give you the the access to the materials, and then you have eight weeks to do to go through it. So 20% of your grade is doing the, like watching the videos of the on-demand. So if you just watch the videos, you get 20% of your, of your grade. The other 20% is you get two practice tests. They take the best of those two, and that is what they give the other 20%. So if you got, if you aced your practice exam and you completed all modules, well, you have, you have 40% of your grade. And then the certification exam is the final of the course and that's worth 60%. So if you don't pass the certification, you're probably not gonna pass the class uh, is the way that they grade it. Yeah, well, and it's interesting because the practice exam is essentially, like they're basically kind of reinforcing the fact that you, you should pass because yeah. you're, you're getting used to it uh, all the same. That's interesting. So can, did you take, uh, are you taking these simultaneously? Like, is that an option to people who are a little bit more aggressive with the time? So not in the associate not in the uh, undergrad certificate in the bachelor's course, there are two sets of, of classes you can take together. So um, the first set is the GISF, which is their, the, Security fundamentals is actually one level below GSEC. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting that that's in the bachelor's, not the undergrad, but whatever. Um, that is partnered with their rate, their writing, and their presentation courses. So those okay. three come together. They're all kind of lower level, so it's not too like crazy to to take those all at the same time. And then the second set is their Python coding course plus whatever one of the three electives that you pick during the bachelor's program. Um, I'm in their Python course right now, but the nice thing about the undergrad certificate is all four of those classes directly transfer into the bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And so I just took my G pen as my elective from my undergrad and I placed that in the slot of the elective that goes with the Python. So I'm only doing their Python course right now because I, I would be nervous taking this Python course and a second course even if I was like crazy aggressive, it's just so much material. It's, it would be really difficult to do multiple at the same time. Yeah. So, so the program you're going through, uh, I'm getting a little confused between the undergrad certificate and the bachelor's program. So the bachelor's, yeah. you're going to get a four-year degree, like a bachelor's. Yeah. And the undergrad is a, um, a certificate, right? Yeah. So um, the, these, these classes and this um, use of the GI Bill, is this mm -hmm. mapped to the bachelor's or to the undergrad? So when you, if you're enrolled in the undergrad, the GI Bill is mapped to undergraduate certificate credits. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the only thing that matters about that is how much, how many days and months they take out of your GI Bill. So they're taking more days and months out of my GI Bill when I'm, as I'm registered to bachelor's degree level credits than mm -hmm. they did when I was registered to undergrad certificate level credits would be great for me because all of those undergrad directly transferred in, but it saved me like three months of GI Bill to do it as an undergrad certificate. Yeah. Because their fancy VA math, which doesn't make sense, it, you're kind of, if you do it that way, you're, you're just kind of saving GI Bill. And, and right. So, so, 
so the takeaway for people watching is if, if they wanted to pursue this is really to go through the undergrad certificate first mm -hmm. and get and get GI bill to pay for that. And then once they complete that, move all of it into the undergrad and, mm -hmm. and start executing that way, right? Yeah, yeah. And I again their math is is funky, so it might not be perfect, but the way if my estimates are right. Mm -hmm. The ACS program, the undergrad certificate program, takes about four months of GI Bill out. If you transfer all those directly into the bachelor's, the bachelor's to finish it out is only going to take me six, six or seven months of GI Bill out. Mm -hmm. Then if I go from the bachelor's directly into their master's degree, I can finish the entire master's degree with the GI Bill with like one month to spare. So like, if, if someone had a full 36 months GI Bill and were like, I 100% want cybersecurity, like that is what I want to do. And they did undergrad certificate, bachelor's, master's, they would never have to pay out of pocket. That's dynamite. And that's really the key takeaway for, for this video and for people watching is like, like it's so awesome. SANS is excellent, excellent education. Mm -hmm. And the, the, you know, the, the, the gripe with SANS is always that it's too expensive. It's, it's, it's prohibitive for normal people um to, to get into so like this you know discovering this is awesome now so logan there's definitely some uh pro like vet program that sans has that's different from what you're talking about and i want to make sure that people don't get confused and accidentally go down the wrong path so can you kind of share what that program is and why you'd want to avoid it or or perhaps choose your path over that path yeah, so they have what they call the Vet Success Academy. I'm pretty sure that's the exact name. Um, it is a, it's it's ran differently. So it is not within the school, the SANS Technology Institute. It's just within the SANS Institute. And it's an amazing program, and I give SANS a lot of props for it. Um, they give uh, veterans who are coming out of the service the opportunity to take four SANS courses, which are actually the exact courses that you would take in the undergrad certificate program. Um, it's just not through the school. So you're not actually, you're not going to get the certificate. You're not going to get like the college portion of that, but it's completely free. So it's not taking any JAG or anything else like that. The downside to it is they only accept a small amount of veterans every year. I think it's even like once a year and it's, it's bought or pretty heavily amongst veterans, rightfully so, because it's free. Um, but I applied to it. I got denied because I was already working in a kind of security fashion in IT. And it's really for people who have no experience with IT or security like that. So when I applied, they're like, sorry, you know, you, you're already kind of in the field. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what pushed me over into the school section. So there is that. The issue is just it's it's one time a year. It's it's heavily fought for, and there's a lot of requirements you have to get to to even really be able to apply. So if someone can do it, that's great. But I know very limited amount on it because I got denied. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, but that's good. I mean, it sounds like your path's a little bit better because you get the certs. You mm -hmm. you get less time taken off your GI Bill. It's way less competitive. Like you can almost. I don't know if you can guarantee entry into the program, but uh, like you said, it's less competitive at a minimum. Yeah. We had talked before and you had developed some type of like uh, tools or, or uh, mapping or anything like that. It looked like you were just looking at it. Is Are there resources available to people that you've developed that can help them kind of map this and figure out the best way? Uh, as far as this program goes, like what mm -hmm. they want to do, um, I don't have any like, you know, really automated tools or anything like that, but I am more than willing to talk to anyone and everyone on like LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter or whatever and, and walk them through, you know, possible pipelines of going through these different courses and like what they want to do because it, as you get more intensive into the programs, when you get to the higher, higher levels, you kind of need to know what niche you want to go to. So if you want to go pen testing or you want to go like blue team defense, or if you want to go forensics or ICS, um, there's so many options that can sometimes get overwhelming. And so a lot of the, the new um, veterans uh, that are coming into the program on our, on the Slack channel will be like, I have no idea what I want to do elective wise. 
And so mm-hmm. I always try to jump in on that and be like, okay, well, let's think in game. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? And it's not always cut and dry. So like, I don't want to be a pen tester, but G pen was something that I was super interested in and is very helpful for threat hunters, which is what I want to be, to be yep. able to think, you know, how are they going to attack my network? And so it was great. I don't regret taking it at all. I'm very happy I take it, but it's the last red team I'm going to take. It's like yeah. the last red team cert. Um, and I did that very intentionally. And so I, I love helping, you know, guys and girls try to figure out if they go through this program, what they want to do, what they want to get out of it, and the best way to kind of set them up. So more than willing to talk to anyone and everyone about how to do it. And awesome. Yeah. And, and I brought up your LinkedIn right here it's just so people can see it. Would you recommend that, you know, if someone wanted to connect with you, this might be the the easiest way to kind of get a hold of you? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, I've kind of backed off uh, some other platforms because it's just time with, you know, having a job and, and school and kids and stuff. LinkedIn's kind of just the, is my last, <laughs> my last social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, you can, you can lose a few hours really quickly on Discord. No, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> awesome. But, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Lo- Logan, dude, this is, this has been awesome. Um, I think a lot of people are going to take advantage of it. Any, any pitfalls or, or concerns that people, um, you know, may have, I, I know you said that they may not know where they want to go, but I, I feel like even if you start with the fundamentals in the GSEC, like you're really still general and you're mm-hmm. still actually figuring out if you even want InfoSec. Um, but you know, I guess if you burn your credits uh, GI Bill on those two, you'd only really lose two months, two days, right? So if you yeah. if you eject, you still kind of have enough enough GI Bill to go for uh, some for other programs. Else. Yeah, and that's and that's a, like the second. You know, there's so many cherries on top with doing it in the line of undergrad certificates and bachelors to masters. Is if you like I said, if you get into it and you're like, I'm not into this. This is not what I want, and you dip out you're not losing, you know, six, seven, eight months off your GI bill, like other yeah. programs might, might steal. Um, but if you, you get into it and you fall in love with it, you're like, yes, hundred percent. That's what I want to do. Then you just transfer those into bachelors and you just saved a bunch of GI bill and you can just keep building it and keep working the system. Um, and, you know, I always tell some of my, my veteran buddies and stuff who are just now getting out of like the service, they're like, well, I don't know what to do. And I don't want, I don't know like where to go. And I always tell them, like, get as much out of the GI Bill as you can, because, like, the military gets as much as it can out of you, so you get the most you can out of it. Like, like honestly, like, they, they worked you as much as they, they could, so you're, you know, work the system as much as you can, you know? Yeah. And it's not, don't commit fraud by any means, but <laughs> if, if they give you less credits, take less credits. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's your benefit, right? I mean, that's, that's what it's there for. It's your benefit, and you're just following the rules. Okay, thanks so much. Again, reach out to Logan if you got any questions. He's the expert on this strategy. Um, really, I hope I hope everybody who has access and knows they want to go all in on cybersecurity takes advantage of this. Again, this is his blog, Insert ID here. He writes up on all his SANS training, all his all his um, different certs and boot camps and stuff like that. So if you're interested in, you know, what did the, you know, what's the GAC uh, incident handler? Uh, cert like you know logan's written it up so check it out okay that's going to do it for this week thanks so much and until next time stay secure